I've always said that beekeepers really are queen keepers. Beekeepers really do need to learn more about their queen because the queen is really the lifeblood of the hive. And it's so important to keep your queen alive. But so many times beekeepers are finding out that their queen is gone or dead. And it, it really troubles beekeepers because they ask me questions all the time. They're like, David, why did my queen die? And I can't tell you how hard it is to answer that question because I really don't know what you've been doing. I don't know your management styles, your skills in the hive, what's been going on. Do they swarm and not replace the queen? There are so many reasons why your queen may have died. But stick around through this video because I'm going to share with you today two reasons and two ways that you can keep your queen alive. Now, queens die from so many different reasons. And one of the ways that sometimes we hate to admit is they die from beekeepers incompetence. Now, I've had a lot of stories uh, that I could share with you about why queens have died. And let me share a few with you is I remember one time somebody picked up some bees from me and as they were traveling home, their queens were dead when they got home. And I asked them, you know, what happened? What did you do? Well, it turned out that they stopped off at their favorite restaurant. They left the queens on the dash of their car in the summertime, windows rolled up. <laughs> well, obviously that's beekeeper incompetence. Bees are just gonna get too hot. Queens are gonna get too hot in their little cages like that and they're gonna die. Here's another reason. Um, a lot of times beekeepers are working their frames in their hive like this. And you've seen videos of mine where the queen's walking around and such. Look at that space right here. Now these, are, these aren't frames, these are queen rearing frames, but you can see where this wood kind of joins together right there. And you've heard me complain that they don't make these pointed anymore. And uh, anyway, if a queen happens to walk around from one side to the other like she does, and you put the frames back together, you squashed her. And so sometimes bees, uh, sometimes queens are squashed between frames. A lot of times beekeepers, especially new beginners, new beginners pay attention. They wear gloves that are very bulky because they don't want to be stung. Good, I get it. You should, if you're uncomfortable, wear gloves. But just keep in mind, those big bulky gloves can actually cause you to sometimes squeeze and kill the queen while you're working your hive. Well, let me grab a frame back here because I wanna demonstrate this. A lot of times when beekeepers are actually working their bees, they might be holding a frame like this in the bee yard and they are holding it more like this and the sun's behind. You see the queen walking around and for some reason she falls off into the grass. Well, you gotta realize good laying queens don't fly. What happens is the queen actually gets uh, maybe just lost. She can't make her way back to her hive anymore. Even though it's pretty close by, now here's the thing, sometimes she can fall off. It doesn't happen that often. She's pretty good about staying on there, but sometimes she falls off and the beekeeper doesn't even know she fell off. Now, sometimes if you do an inspection um, and you go back to your hive two, two or three hours later and you see a big clump of bees in the grass, <laughs> your queen is in there, she fell off. Now, I'm a certified master beekeeper and I can tell you, let's say in the course of one single beekeeping season, I will notice three or four times that my queen is somehow off of that frame and either on the wall of, a, of the inside of the hive or maybe sometimes she's fallen off into the grass. So be careful about always watching your queen. And what I tell people is when you're putting this frame back in the hive, you see your queen on it, watch the queen all the way down into the hive so that you know that she's not over here on these pieces of wood smashing edges or queen smashing edges. Just keep the queen in the center as you put the frame back in so you don't squish her. Another reason that beekeepers can lose their queens is because they're too fast. Beekeepers will pull the frames out of the hive, they'll flip them over too fast. That's when the queen goes flying away, not really flying, but flipping away into the grass or something. So always lift up your frames very carefully and in slow motion. Give the queen time to get a foothold because she's used to walking around on the frame down there. And when you pull it up too fast and flip it, you can actually lose your queen by mishandling your frames too fast or too clumsy. Also, queens have been known to be pushed out of the hive during a very heavy nectar flow. Not all that uncommon. 
they're, I think the bees just feel like they want to make more room and the queen is taking up too much space laying all those eggs. So they decide, yeah, let's push her out of the hive and that'll give us a little time to have a little more space to put more incoming uh, nectar in and make honey. So during a big, heavy uh, nectar flow, uh, be on the lookout for a missing queen that the hive themselves decided to shove out. Another reason that you can lose your queen, and this one is probably more common actually, is that it's a poorly mated queen. You know, she'll come, you'll get a package or a nucleus or maybe an overwintered colony. You start seeing a lot of cool brood. You're like, oh good, I got a good laying queen. The year's going good, all at once, gone. Well, a lot of times what's happened is she's just run out of stored sperm. She hasn't been mated either properly or she's just aged out on you. And so that's another reason that you need to be watching how many eggs she's laying, how good is she doing. So you can be ahead of the game before she's uh, just ran out of ability to lay eggs. Now, sometimes it's genetics. There are some queens that maybe genetically just don't have the longevity of years that you're looking for in your queen, and they just die out quickly. On rare occasions, there can be two queens in one hive, and in that case, sometimes those two, uh, those two queens will fight, and they'll kill each other, and uh, because you know sometimes when there's a fight, both die. And I've seen it so many times when I'm inspecting a hive that I will actually see queens fighting in there. So it does happen. We think there's just one queen in there, but sometimes a stray queen can fly in from a mating flight, land on the wrong hive. Sometimes uh, they, it can be a mother-daughter queen, but eventually they can fight and kill each other. Now, sometimes I've had beekeepers tell me, and they'll show me pictures or videos, of what I call a crashing colony. <laughs> and they'll show me, you know, you got a 10 frame deep box, the brood area. Should be a lot of bees in there, a lot of brood, a lot of activity, a lot of resources, but all at once they show me this crashing colony. A crashing colony is one that's just dying out and it's a small group of bees. And so what happens is they haven't been able to care for their queen. They haven't been able to feed her because they're out of resources. Well, queens really only primarily eat royal jelly from nurse bees. So a crashing colony doesn't have many nurse bees. The queen can actually die from malnutrition in a crashing colony. Of course, there's always those times when a queen can be injured. Um, she can have birth defects. She can lose a limb, a leg, a wing, and they'll find her is imperfect and they'll try to replace her. They'll kill her off to try to replace her. Now, there's some talk that some queens may not be very compatible with your a geographical area that some queens are able to, you know, be better at living in a hive and laying eggs in a climate that they prefer. So sometimes it could be that they are better based on their climate. I've always liked to raise my own queens in my climate because those queens do seem to do better when I raise them out of my colonies that have overwintered in my climate. Now, of course, just like the bees can get diseases, the queen can also get diseases. So that's not uncommon at all for the bee to get a, a disease or something, so she can die of that. You can also get robbers, other things coming into your hive. Um, robber bees can sometimes just rob a hive out so completely that they'll also kill the queen as well. So it could be yellow jackets, wasps, and that can actually cause your uh, queen to be killed. Now I'm excited to share two tips with you how you can better keep your queen alive. So tip number one, marking your queen. Now why is marking your queen so important? It's because if you mark your queen, you're gonna be able to find her more quickly. Remember how I told you that if you're working your frames like this, the more you're moving your frames up and down, in and out, smashing things together, and uh, you may kill your queen, that's because you may have trouble finding your queen. You may have to go through, you know, leave a comment if you've gone through your hive two or three times trying to find the queen. That means you're manipulating your frames two or three times more than you normally should. That increases the chance you can be clumsy or smash her, she can fall out, right? But if you mark the queen, wow, that's a great idea. It's mind blowing in it. You mark the queen, you can more quickly find her. So instead of looking at 10 frames three times, you look at one frame, two frames, boom, there's a, a red mark and you found her. So marking her really is key. Marking her is gonna help you do better swarm management. You'll know if the same queen is in there that you started with or have they already swarmed and you have a new queen. Now, the second tip I wanna give you guys on uh, 
Helping to keep your queen alive is a really good tip. Let me grab a queen excluder or queen cage. So this is a push in queen cage. So let's say you're doing an inspection and you happen to see your queen walking around on maybe the first or second frame, but you have to look at all the other frames to do a good inspection. Let's pretend the queen is that little dot there. You can take this little push in cage and can just push it into the comb like this. Now you can confine her. All right, here's the queen. I want to keep her kind of on this side over here. I'm kind of nudging her along so she doesn't go below anywhere. I've got my queen cage here, so I'm gently going to try to find a place to poke it in right here. All right, I got her in there. I'm po pushing it down until it hits the mid rib section. Now she is underneath here. Bees can go in and out because that's queen excluder material, but the queen can't. Now, as you begin to manipulate your frames, do a thorough inspection, maybe you're going to keep it open a little bit longer, you're not going to kill your queen. She's not going to fall off a frame because there she is. She's caged right there. Now that's brilliant. That's, that is just such a life-saving thing right there for the queen. Now, if you're more comfortable caging your queen and putting her in a queen cage, that works too. You can pick her up off the frame, put her in a queen cage with a, a little top on it, a cap, and then stick her in your pocket while you're working so she doesn't get killed. Other times, some beekeepers may, and I've shown videos this, instead of the pushing queen cage, you may just want to see the queen there and set this frame aside. That's fine, but I'll tell you what, I have had queens walk off and get on this, and then they'll walk off onto a box or wherever I lean this up against, and they're gone. So caging her in a queen cage is really good. I'll leave a link in the description where you can pick up these queen cages as well. Oh, I want to show you one more thing. Uh, this, look at this. <laughs> People ask me about this all the time, right? And it's kind of like a hair clip, but it actually is a way that beekeepers have to scoop up their queen. So if you see, you know, your queen is right there, you can just go in like this, if I can get it kind of turned this way, and then get it where she's in the middle and just let it close back up. It really won't kill her because there's a gap there, if you can see that gap. So I'm often worried that I'll kill her, but it works pretty good. You can get her, and now you can just hang on to this while you finish your inspection. Here's the big thing though, when you put your hive back together, uh, be sure and take the queen cage off to let the queen out, <laughs> and be sure to release her out of this so that she can get back to work. I have a great video that you guys love, and if you haven't seen this, you need to watch it because it really introduces you to queen rearing, making your own queens. We've been talking about keeping the queen alive. Well, if you kill her, it'd be great if you had the ability to make your own queen. Follow me over here and learn how to raise your own queens.